online and all the nice comments and all the YouTube videos, I thought I'd do a quick rig rundown on the B rig uh, that we put together over the late winter, early spring. So we are in Cleveland, Ohio, Akron, Ohio. Out of, at, out of Cleveland. At, at, yeah, Akron, Ohio, at the uh, Goodyear Theater. This place is beautiful. So let's take a quick peek at it. Again, nothing you've never seen before, but the goal with this drum set is because sometimes we're going into theaters that are maybe 100 years old or even older that don't have a proper push to the stage, and we really can't even get the uh, DW kit with the rotating drums uh, and the riser up on the stage. We, we ran into a problem one time, we had to push it over the front of the stage. So we decided if we want to give the full rush experience and the quote unquote live it all again theme, we came up with the 1982 Signals kit. Now this is a, my little version of Signals and a Grace Under Pressure and a tiny bit of um, Power Windows. So it, you'll notice with the, the Grace Under Pressure Power Windows look the, the up and over racks for the coat tallies and the wind chimes and the pimple blocks. That's more from the uh, from that era, from, from Grace Under Pressure and, uh, and uh, Power Windows when he started to kind of bring things together a little bit. He's kind of moving away from all this stuff, but we wanted to do the uh, uh, you know, regular tubular bells and the, all the percussion instruments you'd, you'd find back in the day. So we come in here. Um, I was lucky to snag this drum set back in February of, of this year, uh, 2024, and uh, it was that brown mahogany color. And there's just no way I was going to keep it that color. I was going to do this. I was going to go candy apple red. So I had it sent down to uh, a guy named Troy Jones, just outside of Louisiana. And he painted these things for me uh, to match Neil's uh, Tama kit from the, from the early 80s. And there's a ton of gold flake underneath here with the candy on top. And, uh, you know, I'm such a big brush fan. The uh, neatest thing I ever saw Neil do that caught my attention as a young little boy was he moved the badges out front. So we did the same thing. We put the badges in the air holes and moved them uh, so they would be in the proper spot for this kit. And the same thing on the contratons at the top. You know, when they came from Tama, they were down here. So we went ahead and put them on, on the top. And, uh, and Robert Milharat really was awesome. He owns Neil Pierce's Tama kit. So he was instrumental. And thanks for picking up the phone and reading your Facebook Instant Messenger, man, because I blew that guy up constantly. So as we move around the kit, we go 6, 8, 10, 12 concert times, uh, 12, 13, 15, 16, 8 by 18. And then I just have a 20-inch by 14, uh, you know, gong bass drum in the back. But then we coupled everything with the, some modern technology. Neil Peart once said that old drums are, are great, but new drums are better. So when you fast forward 40 years from uh, Tama hardware to DW, and that's what I play, uh, our DW drums, um, I went ahead and put all DW hardware on here because uh, the, the guys that help set the drum set up, they're familiar with it, number one, and it's just, it's just tight. It locks in. Uh, we're familiar with it. Everything feels the same. And um, I went ahead and did that on the floor toms, the floor tom legs, the memory locks, also on the, on the gong bass drum, and even around here on, on, the, on the timbali. Uh, I put the, the DW hardware on that also. Um, was able to snag a, an old uh, Tama uh, stand, you know, for the concert tom. So that's done properly. But I use Ludwig mounts because they just seem to work better. So this is kind of a hodgepodge of me putting this together for a more of a present day feel. Um, on the kick drum, where Neil Peart uh, on the left kick, where he had the uh, this 12 inch rack tom offset. Initially, what I did was we, I had uh, Troy make it a virgin kick. So we filled the hole. And then I had a guy make for me that little, uh, again, that offset piece of material that Neil had here, um, but it just didn't work out the way I wanted it to. It did not meet my quality standards at all, so I just did what Neil Peart did on the R40 tour kit on El Darko and just put the DW rail on it, which allows you to move this uh, rack tom a little further to the right as we look at the kit, rather than being bumping in over here and, and spreading the kit out. I'm assuming that's what he did. Uh, so we could kind of bring this together and, and make it tighter. Um, at the moment, I'm just using my DW collector's uh, maple snare, which is also in, in the DW candy apple red. Um, all DW hardware up top. Again, the, uh, 
the, the, just the symbol arms, they're easy to get to, uh, you know, when you, when you want to do something quick if something loosens up. And again, uh, did uh, the similar thing that Neil did on El Darko as well, as we just went ahead and, and, and took this little mount and mounted the 10-inch splat here because I had that little clip on, that little Ludwig thing that clipped on there, but I did not want to clip it onto, uh, onto, the, onto the rim, hoop rather, and, and, and scratch it all up. Um, in the electronic department, it's all, it's all really the same as, as the 8 kit, um, using the mallet cat for, you know, the glockenspiel uh, parts of Spirit of Radio and um, also Witch Hunt and uh, Circumstances. But then we went ahead, and this is the moving pictures kind of hat tip with the, the bell tree here. So, um, you know, if you remember that great shot from, from the exit stage left video you know, of Neil sitting right here, you can see the tubular bells. Um, these are moosers, uh, um, just because I, I got my hands on a set. Uh, and then you see the temple blocks over here, and then the crotales. It's probably my favorite part of, of the whole kit, because um, how great was it when he would stand up and, and play those. And I, I, I really hemmed and hawed of, you know, maybe mounting them on the back of the tubular bells the way he had it from, you know, hemispheres through the moving picture store. Even on signals he had them back there, I believe. But... I didn't, uh, I wanted to use the real estate over here, so. Uh, Signals was up and over. Yeah, so, so um, we were grateful for Jim Hurd over at Ceiling and Limited again, coming in here and, and uh, getting the monopoles together again for us. So, so they're, they're just like the A-Rig, it kind of cleans the, the look up and, uh, and uh, just to, using all the wind chimes, tubular bells. So when we're playing, you know, natural, um, I'm sorry, Jacob's Ladder, and you're playing on that middle section on all those real, percussion instruments is just cool and I was I never saw the permanent waves tour I was too young at that time so I didn't get to see Neil Peart play say Jacob's Ladder but I did see Xanadu and it's uh, lots of fun to get up here and use all these instruments um, yeah this is again my little iteration of what he did with uh, um, uh, the, the the way he had his ride back in the day where he had it uh, actually a I, mean, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how he had it. Maybe one of you guys can, can leave a comment, but uh, it came right through here. And I made one back, you know, in the day. I took a, 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 a guitar, I mean, a, 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 a cymbal arm and just drilled it out and threaded it. But, again, I just did what he did on R40. And just, that's a Tama multi-clamp, and this is it's a DW arm. And I just kind of took my uh, grinder and ground it down so it would sit in there. It's pretty sturdy. You know, it, there's a little bit of movement. And... Um, you know, and then lastly, we got to do the, uh, the uh, uh, electronic stuff for songs like Manhattan Project and, um, you know, where I need Witch Hunt, where I need some pads. So I just threw two Rollins back over the gong bass drum in the back, and then I've got the uh, Dawes uh, pad right here. And, uh, Dan Dawes has been such a great uh, uh, help to me, and I really appreciate everything, and uh, also... Uh, down here, a drum tech down for the for the uh, fat cat pedal. So we've got uh, you know five triggers in here. And we've got the, another Roland. This is a uh, I guess a PD105 um, trigger. So we have five triggers in here out front. And uh, and then the last of, you know the Rush experience is always the callback to 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 Rush and Neil Pierce. So we did the drum heads like we would do. Um, he did on, on the Signals tour. So we put the man against the masses and then put the Rush experience over there. And uh, we're having a, a fun time. The riser fronts are just refashioned, but they have some of the Rush artwork on there for all the different albums we play. And we throw the bobbleheads up there. People love it. The fans love seeing the bobbleheads up. And it looks like Neil's falling over, man. Come on, buddy. And uh, that is the B-Rig Tama Superstar circa 1982-83 refinished in a custom candy apple red, all A Zildjian symbols up top, and um, a mixture of DW hardware and the Gibraltar stuff on the bottom. On, on my old riser, I'm glad I kept this from some of the old bands I was in. I was getting ready to sell it, but man, this was a dream come true and a luck to the draw that we can have this and the other rig uh, when we're playing. And I'm going to do a rig rundown on the big rotating riser. Um, maybe soon but we're going to be out all i mean through the beginning of the year um and there's just a hodgepodge of different venues so i'm going to be playing this probably all the way through february uh, uh until we can get a run of shows 
where it makes sense to have the big rig. So, you know, again, thanks for all the support. Um, we love Rush, and we uh, are just grateful to be out and play it. I hope you guys are having as much fun as we are with our band and the videos we put out. So thanks again, and Rush on.